Proof. Printed right there. Cycle over. Completed. <coughs> How long does it take per cycle? Depends on what you program. Oh, okay. we'll, go, we'll go through that. Cool. Okay, then, then it says that it, power was off, so you got to, I don't know why they do this, but anyway, you got to push that. Then, okay, once you get to that screen, you want the machine to warm up. You got, you got it? <laughs> then you're going to push generator and jacket to turn it on. Generator on, see it switch? Oh, okay. Jacket on. Now when the jacket goes on, it's going to fill it up with water and start warming up. That's going to take about 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. When you come back here and see that the jacket gauge is around 20 pounds, you, you can select the cycle. Okay. The way you do that is you do that and you put in your magic code. One, 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 enter. <laughs> you can choose gravity. I got one in five minutes, but you can you can program these however you want. Okay, these are all set at 250 degrees. I think that's what you guys sterilize at. 250. But you can program them however you want. Let's say you go 55 minutes. Enter. And that goes to 55. Okay? I like to lose just two or three just because I don't like to stand around for 55 minutes. Well, how long does like trash usually need to go? Do you know? I, you're telling me you normally do liquids. So I'm thinking, now I don't know what your protocol is for bags like that. Mm -hmm. It usually took board. like two hours last um, time. But. Well, for the whole liquid cycle. That's mm -hmm. including warm up, lag time, and exposure time. But that sounds about right. Okay. So you don't have to run those in liquids. Really, liquids is just for liquids. So this, if this is all solids and this is all trash, you can go gravity. Gravity, and that's yeah, for, you know ten minutes or no, oh no no. If you had a pre-vacuum machine, it would be like three minutes. But they're saying you need at least at least forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes. Uh, but everybody does it at sixty just to be sure. Forty-five minutes is the number that you put in there. Yeah yeah. Okay. You, you would you would actually pick uh, either forty-five there or sixty here. Okay. Or you can just program that to be forty-five. You, yeah. You got that much. The liquid just takes so long to cool down. Oh Cause, yeah. Because you don't want to, you don't want to boil. If you got just liquid containers in there, if you boil it, if you exhaust it too quick, it'll just boil out, and you lose all your media or liquids or whatever you're trying to sterilize. But if it's just trash, you don't need to go. You don't care if it boils out or no bags. What do you care? Mm -hmm. you know, so you can go grab it. Okay. Okay. Anyway, yeah, you just select the cycle. It'll tell you if the door's closed or not. When you close the door, just, let me see, see that little sign that says door is open? Mm -hmm. You'll see it go closed, and then just do it another turn until you feel it tighten up a little bit. You don't have to be too tight. You'll notice if you start to cycle and you get steam leaking out here, you didn't tighten the door enough, okay? But once you get pressure there, you won't be able to back it up because that's a safety thing. Um, what else? Um, well, that's basically it. Just at the night when you walk out, go like this. We already know so it has automatic blowdown, so you don't have to manually blow on the boiler, which is a good thing. I'm glad they built that in there, because most people get scared blowing down boilers because it makes all kind of racket and blows out mm -hmm. steam all over the place. But since we're not warmed up yet, yeah, it's not going to be ready to go until the jacket hits 20. I, I could try to start it right now, and it'll just say wait for jack. And it's going to take an hour. An hour. So, 15, um, for, for if you do start it and the jacket's not ready, it won't start when the jacket's ready. It'll still have you. Oh, here I can start it right now. Here, watch. It's just going to tell me waiting for jacket temperature. And then it's as soon not, as it gets there, it'll start it, by itself. As soon as it goes in, the, yes. As soon okay. as it, it, the jacket gets up to about 20 pounds or 253 mm -hmm. or four degrees, mm -hmm. it'll automatically start going. I mean, you can walk away right now and come back two okay. hours later, and it'll be done. So, what are the ways that we mistreat it? Well, not with this new kit. We got an automatic blowdown. Okay. You didn't. You okay? You used to have. To, you were supposed to open this valve every day. I see. To get all the sediment out. At the end of every day, or just every time you run it. End of every day. Okay. okay. But I just ran it, and it's utilizing the valve to automatically. As soon as you turn that off, that switch off there. Yeah. It, it allows the boiler to blow down by itself. So all right. You don't have to do that. So Once can. You, can we leave the switch on all day so it doesn't take forever to like warm up? Oh yeah, yeah. Just you're turn supposed off at to night. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just turn it on in the morning. And leave Whoever it. comes on, just turn yeah, it on yeah, yeah. and okay. leave. Shut it off. Okay. And Kiki has to call up Consolidated 
fact, you guys might want to make a note of this. That little sediment screen, the bottom of it's gone. So you need another sediment screen. Okay, and you need another 36 pound safety valve. That's this guy right there. You don't have to have me to come back and install it. Uh, any old plumber can just cut that pipe and put that 36 pound safety on there. I don't need to vacuum the wallet out for that one. Because it leaks. And then it's just going to leak more and more and more as it gets older and older. I couldn't. I couldn't beat on it spraying up WD-40 on it for that. Right. So we need to replace the yeah, you safety need to valve it. there? Just don't sterilize anything over 250, 253 degrees. If you go up to 270, that safety valve is just going to start blowing. Okay. So just keep it, keep it at 250 degrees and you're fine until you get into the safety valve. Because okay. once we start a cycle, you'll notice it. Once it gets up 20 pounds, it'll start wisping. And mm -hmm. if I, I put 25 or 30 pounds on it, it's going to just start filling this place up with steam. So it needs to be replaced. But it's okay to use at 250 for now. Just for another month or two until we can get the part in. What does that screen do? Just makes particular keeps screen. the... You guys, yeah, uh, once once a day before you start in the morning, you're supposed to pull this thing out. Look at that. Right here. Hot? Yeah, hot. Oh, I see. But it's it got a hole in the bottom. Uh, but that's where it collects some of the stuff. It keeps the... Too much dirt gets down there, it'll clog the valve, and they'll start leaking, and you'll end up calling me again. <laughs> so every morning, check that, make sure it's... You should, you know. I, I mean, I look at the chamber here. Trash so bag's not much coming through. It doesn't seem yeah. like you guys are abusing it that way, sorry. But that's just part of your startup. Um, also, tell Kiki to order. I only noticed one roll of paper. I don't know why they don't send you a box of papers. But tell them you need to order a, a box of a thermal paper for your printer. How do we replace that after that's finished? Uh, I never did it before. Oh, yeah, you just pop it out here. Yeah, might as well show you. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Simple. Just drop the new one in. Thread it on the, the take up spool down there. There's a little slot. You just. Bend it, because you guys don't tear these off every time. Mm -hmm. yeah, no is that case. supposed to be like verification or something? Or? Oh yeah, this is your documentation. Yeah. I need this one to prove that I got one working. <laughs> and then you just uh, well, you can feed the paper. And this has a reprint. It'll print your, I believe, just the last cycle. As soon as you push start for another cycle, I believe it will do it. Oh, I powered it off and on. Is it going to remember? I might, I might have already cleared its memory buffer. Oh, no, I did. Let's see. Oh, yes, I did. I already cleared the buffer when I turned it on. I'm back on this. I'm sorry, I can't reprint it. But before you push start again, if you needed two copies, I don't know why you would, but it's that capability's there. And make sure that you get the take up spools with the paper. Mm. Or we keep the old one. <laughs> yeah. That just goes back like that. And. I said just put it in a little slot. Give me a slide in. Easy to operate. Turn it on, push the button. Just remember your codes. One, one, one. One, one, one. Yeah, you're going to have to. Are there any other codes for whatever reason? Uh, yeah, there's the manager's code. Oh. Uh, there's my service code. Manager control when the jacket comes on and I'll also control passwords for you guys. But 
most people don't want to go down that way. I mean, you know, it's got the capability. Oh, that's how you board it, by the way. Push the red thing. Reset alarm. Oh, yeah, so you got manager that wants a password or mini service. How's, um... And, and, and it'll give, give you different menus. Like for me, I use it to calibrate this thing or manually mm -hmm. troubleshoot it. And if you want to, um, whenever you get stuck, I'll just change, I must have changed passwords on It's in the book. <laughs> uh, but for you guys, uh, whenever you get stuck, if you want to go back, just remember, if you get a screen you don't know, just push the CSS and it'll take you back to the main menu. And all that's in the book, but I don't know, nobody yeah. knows the books. <laughs> all um, right. Oh, our jacket's almost ready, so I can start a second. Yeah. some baggies in there. I'd like to see if we do one more cycle before I <laughs> consider it healed. So let's select the cycle. We'll do our code 111. Enter that. We're going to go gravity. We're going to select. Uh, we're going to get this down. We're going to select that. And the door is closed. We're going to push yes. So when you do liquids, does it decide how long the drying time is? Or the well, it, it'll bleed it down at a certain rate. Okay. Normally in an empty chamber, you got 20 pounds in there. You don't want to come down any quicker than a pound a minute. That way, your liquids are staying about the same temperature and pressure. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you come down too quick in the pressure in the atmosphere, it'll just boil over. Yeah. yeah. And, but, is it, I mean, so there's a possibility, it sounds like, that... If you put it on liquid, you can still adjust the timing and make it start to boil over or not really? No, you're only adjusting the exposure time. Okay. okay. Not the exhaust time. So the exhaust time... You won't be able to on... on um, what was it that you just... The dry time? Is that what you just... Wait, that was for, the, that was for a gravity Gravity, cycle. okay. Okay, for a liquid cycle, you don't have any... any yeah, time. so for a gravity it, cycle... It, gravity cycle, you can... It's, it's for stuff like... Mostly the dry time is for stuff like... Um, tips packs and, and yeah. stuff in muslin, surgical instruments. You know, they, they don't want to pull those out completely hot and mm -hmm. wet you know, mm -hmm. because it's a conduit for infection and germs. Okay. And it just dries the packs better. I see. Yeah. But for these, you know, you don't care. You, know, you don't care how wet they are because you add water in them. Okay, it just kicked in. Put a condition for a minute, then it's going to try to make temperature. It'll hold temperature for three minutes. Go to exhaust for one minute. And then you're good. End of the day, it just... So for the, the liquid cycle, we don't have to adjust anything? Well, just the exposure time. Oh. Yeah, just exposure time. Right. Minimum 60 minutes. Yeah, I guess everything done. Unless you're not doing gallons of stuff, are you? Not, not always. Once somebody did one that, that did that, and it caused some issues. I can't remember what the issue was. With it. Well, if you do anything bigger than a liter, yeah. then you want to make sure it's like 90 minute exposure. Okay. Um, you guys don't do anything really pathogenic here anyway. So. I mean, you, know, you don't have collar that you're going to be putting in. No, no, no. Yeah. It's not too worried. But, but the worry about that is if you get a gallon, the, the outside of that container is going to be 100, 250 degrees, mm -hmm. but it takes another 45 minutes for the middle of that liquid, it's called the lag time, to get hot. And if you want it exposed, you know, for to kill the bugs that are inside, then you've got to allow for the yeah. lag time. That's it. That's it. They actually have load probes where you can attach to these things where you stick it right in the middle of your liquid. And when that liquid, the center of that liquid gets sterilization temperature, then the timer kicks in. Then you get your your accurate exposure of time. Yeah. That's it. All right.